The talk around the Detroit Pistons starting lineup is really starting to heat up with the idea of bringing number five overall pick from last year off the bench in Jane Ivey. Is that a possibility? Heck, is it even likely that's going to happen? We're going to talk about that in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five-star review. Whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on, that's another great way to support the podcast. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. And today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50-plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Today is going to be a very, I think, heated podcast, man. There's, there's some heated conversations, some heated arguments going on in the Pistons community after just one preseason game. And I don't think it's it's... It's bad that this is happening. I think this is warranted discussion to be having. Um, later on the podcast, we're, we're going to provide an update on Jalen Duran and the injury he suffered in the first game of preseason, how that can impact the rest of preseason, um, maybe even a little bit after that. Um, we're going to talk about Cade in the second segment. If you're watching this on YouTube, you see that the topic of that discussion is Cade needs help. Um, stay tuned for what that is. That, that's going to be a fun conversation, I think. But um, to start this podcast off, as of October 10th, the Detroit Pistons still technically don't know what their starting lineup is. Now, if you ask me, these quotes I'm about to read you guys, reading in between the lines, I think they know what their starting lineup is going to be, if you want me to be honest. Now, do I think he's going? To, Monty Williams is going to come out and tell the public exactly, hey, we have our starting lineup, whatever? No. But if you're asking me, I think he knows what the starting lineup is going to be. I mean, I feel like we've seen this almost every year with the Pistons, where the head coach in preseason, like they don't necessarily say this is the starting lineup, but they do things and say things that hint towards, hey, this is the this is probably what we're going to go with, but, you know, nothing's finalized. Nothing can change. So I personally feel like we, we have a good idea of probably what the starting lineup is going to be, but I want to make it clear. Monty Williams has said nothing is finalized. Nothing is for sure yet. Everything's just an idea. Take that for what you will. Um, but the topic of discussion today is – is will Jane Ivey actually come off the bench to start this season? It may be for the whole season. Will he just be a six man for the Pistons this upcoming year? And should that be the case? Um, because Monty came out today after practice that they had. Um, and I, I'm getting these quotes from James Edwards III on Twitter. Um, first thing that he said was that barring injury, Boyan Bogdanovich would have been in Burke's spot. So Alec Burke starting had to do with Boyan's injury, which means... He wanted to start that first preseason game with Cade, Asar, Boyan, Stu, and Durant. That was the starting lineup he wanted to go with. Um, when he was asked about Jane Ivey coming off the bench, Monty Williams said, quote, We're not sure what we're going to do with the injuries. It's not a convo we've had just yet. I've always been straight with players. Um, so, what do we take from this? I, look, I, if the Pistons actually bring Jane Ivey off the bench, to start this year, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. Actually, I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's not going to be a little bit. I'm, I'm going to be pretty disappointed, and this is why. We'll probably talk about it even more in depth in the second segment when we talk about why Cade needs help from the organization and from everyone involved. Um, but here's the problem. The reason why Jane Ivey wouldn't be starting, which it's the only reason that any of us can assume is defense. We've heard nothing about nonstop about defense all offseason, all training camp, have right after the preseason game. Like all we've heard about is defense, 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 defense. So if the Pistons bring Ivy off the bench it's because he's not that good at defense. So the starting lineup would be Cade, Asar, Boyan, Stu, and Durant. And hypothetically, that that lamp will provide better defense without Ivy in the lineup. Now, will that lamp be better defensively? Probably, but here's my argument here, and you'll see where I'm going with this. Basically, what's really being decided here, if they do decide to go 
with that starting lineup and Ivy comes off the bench, which again is nothing's finalized, but if that's actually what they do decide to go with, Cade, Asar, Boyan, Stu, Duran, basically what they're doing is choosing Stu to start rather than Ivy. That that's basically the decision being made there. They think Stu is going to impact the team more defensively than Ivy can impact the team, and I heavily disagree with that. I think that is that I I am so strongly against that idea being the case. Um, and here's why. So the, the whole argument for starting Stu, for what it's worth, you guys know what the starting lineup would be for me. I've said over and over, I would start Cade, Ivy, Asar, Boyan, Dern. I think that gives you the best balance of both. But the whole idea behind starting Isaiah Stewart is that he's this great defender that's going to impact this team defensively and he's going to help them become better defensively. Now, this past season, the Pistons were 27th in defensive rating. 117.8 points per possession. The only teams worse were the Portland Trailblazers, the Houston Rockets, and the San Antonio Spurs. Isaiah Stewart, when he was on the floor, the Pistons had a 116.9 defensive rating. When he was off the court, they had a 117.1 defensive rating. So they were 0.2 points better than Isaiah Stewart. Now, I want to say this. Defensive rating is not simply, you don't just look at it and it's like, oh, that guy must be a great defender. Oh, this guy must be a bad defender. Like, it's not an individual statistic, okay? However, my point in bringing this up is, for what Stu is not bringing offensively, Stu, we saw in the first preseason game, and it's not overreaction to one preseason game. It's something we saw last year. It's something I've said you're going to continue to see all offseason. When the regular season starts, defenses are going to guard them the exact same way because defenses are going to choose that an Isaiah Stewart open three is better than allowing Cade and Duran to run pick and roll. That's just going to, that's, it's just the math. It's the simple solution to guarding the Pistons. An open Isaiah Stewart three is a more of a win for the defense than allowing Cade and Duran to get going to the pick and roll. And the way they can do that is to tag hard off of Isaiah Stewart and force open threes for him and force him to take those. Which you saw in the first preseason game, exactly what the Suns did. Stu took seven threes. That's what they're going to do. That's going to hurt the Pistons' offense. My argument is very clear here. Isaiah Stewart is not good enough defensively to make up for the for what's going to happen offensively. In order for that to happen offensively, to be worth it defensively, you need to be an all-NBA defender. You can't just be a good defender. You can't just be a fine defender. You legit, if you are going to hurt your franchise player offensively by not giving him enough spacing to where it's going to hurt him, whether Stu is hitting 34, 35% of his shots, defenses are going to guard this the exact same way. They are going, because Stu is just not going to have that type of shooting gravity. He is not going to be hitting tough threes. Like, he's not going to be hitting versatile threes. He's not going to be having that kind of th- gravity out there. It's just not going to happen. It didn't happen last year. It's not going to happen this year. It's just not going to happen, whether he hits 35% or 32% from three. So the argument is, a player that does that to your offense, wh- when your franchise player needs spacing, the only counter to that is that player is changing your defense. And I'm sorry to break it to people, Isaiah Stewart may be a good defender. He may be a fine defender. Isaiah Stewart is not changing the Detroit Pistons defense. Isaiah Stewart is not an all-NBA defender. He is not making an all-defensive team, at least this year. Okay, if you want to believe that's something in his future, go ahead. But he is, like, you would have to impact the defense on the levels of, like, peak Jonathan Isaac with the Orlando Magic at the four. Like, you need to actually be changing the Pistons defense. And when I say changing the Pistons' defense, I mean, by doing that starting lineup, the starting lineup of Cade, Asar, Boyan, Stu, and Duran, assuming that Asar actually is a good rookie defender and Duran, like, makes a step defensively, like, that def- that lineup maybe goes from the 27th-ranked defense to, like, the 22nd. So, wait, tw- 22nd, 21st, I think. Somewhere around there. So, you go from being one of the worst defensive teams to still being below average defensively at the cost of of suffering spacing for your franchise player. That's not evening out. It's not Now, if starting, if your argument to me was, hey, we're going to start Stu with this lineup, and Stu's going to be so good defensively that the Pistons are going to jump up to a top 15 defense, then maybe it's worth it. Then maybe it would be worth it. But I don't believe that Stu is impacting, impacting the Pistons' defense on that type of level. Therefore, we took that long way to hit to the conclusion of the Pistons should be starting I, or Jay and Ivy. 
They should start Ivy. They should bring Stu off the bench. They should start Ivy with Asar and Boyan. Asar will be the Pistons' best wing defender. That will help them defensively. And then on offense, you still have spacing on the floor with Ivy and Boyan providing spacing for for Cade. And you've got Asar who knows how to eat up space and play without just being a spot-up shooter that still provides some kind of uh, spacing and gravity because of how versatile of an offensive player he is. Something also if Stu was able to do something like that, then maybe it makes up for the spacing, but he's also just not versatile offensively. So it just hurts the spacing even more. That's what they should be doing. I if they if they go with Ivy off the bench for Isaiah Stewart, I'm going to be so disappointed. I, I'm I'm just going to be disappointed. I hope Stu comes out and shoots 37% from three. I hope he comes out and is an all NBA defender. I hope that is the case, because then the Pistons will just be great. And everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be perfect. I hope that's the case. That's what everyone hopes to be the case. But if it isn't, if that's not the case, if that's not what ends up happening this year, and Jane Ivey does actually come off the bench, which I, I still struggle to believe it's actually going to happen, um, but with how James Edwards III is really puffing out about his prediction that this could happen, it makes me believe that he's hearing something that this is probably going to happen, and he's feeling strongly behind pushing it. That's just my read on it. That, that's my read on it. If that's ha- if this happens, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be disappointed. Am I saying, oh, Monty's a terrible coach because he does it? No. Am I saying, oh, he needs to be fired because he does it? No. Like, not, you don't, everything doesn't need to be talked about in extremes. That, no, I'm not going that far. I was simply saying I would disagree with this decision. I think this decision would be wrong, and I think this decision would negatively impact the team, and it leads me to this. Kay Cunningham needs help. Cade, Cade just needs help, man. The Pistons have got to help Cade at some point. We're going to talk about what I mean when we come back. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, Jace Medical. Everyone should feel confident to take care of themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. Jace handles everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. With Jace Medical Jace Case, you get five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All you have to do is fill out a simple online form and in some cases, jump on a quick call with one of their board-certified physicians. It's doctor-created and doctor-recommended. Here's a review from a Jace customer named Frank who said, quote, I received our package the same day I got a sinus infection and my doctor was out of town. No appointments for days. Thank goodness it arrived, end quote. In 2023, with pandemics, shortages, storms, you should be prepared for everything that comes your way. Jace Medical is simple. You go online, fill out a form, and then you get a prescription, life-saving medications right at your door. The Jace case gives you that peace of mind in case of any emergency. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off by using my code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Use code Locked On at checkout with Jace Medical. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Let me make this clear before we even continue on with this segment. There is a ton to be excited about with the Pistons. This team is going to be fun. There's a lot of stuff to look forward to. Whether Jane Ivey comes off the bench, starts, no matter what happens, this should at least be a fun season, and I, I had a lot of fun watching them on, on the first game of preseason, even with how bad the score was, even with how uneven the game was. Just fun to have basketball back. I like watching basketball. If you're a basketball fan, you should have fun watching this team. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like we've talked about in the podcast before, last week, unknown um, with the Pistons, but in an exciting way, unknown, that you, you can't wait to see what exactly is going to happen. So it's exciting. None of this is taken away from the excitement that I don't think too much. However, I want to say this. I want to make this clear. I've kind of hinted at this throughout the summer. I'm just going to come out and say it now. Kay Cunningham needs the Pistons to help him. Now, I know the immediate response to that before I even dive in will be, how have they not helped him? They went out and got Joe Harris. They went out and got Monty Morris. They, They hired Monty Williams. This is what I mean by this. Cade Cunningham, through, I mean, what is it exactly? I, I don't want to say two years because he didn't really get to play last year. Through 76 games of his career, the start of last year and his rookie season, he has rarely, rarely 
been put in position to succeed offensively. He has rarely been put in that position. Now, does Cade need to get better? Yes. Does that three-point shot need to come around? Yes. Does he need to improve that himself? Yes. Do, like, that's on Cade. Cade has to get better, obviously. And no, one, I'm not sitting here trying to say Cade's perfect and everyone else is letting him down. No. Cade needs to get better himself. He does. But he also needs his front office. He needs his, his, his organization to also help him out. And you want to know what would not be helping him out? Setting him up for another season of half-court offense spacing that is of Isaiah Stewart, Asar Thompson, and Jalen Durant. Having three guys out there that the defense really is not going to respect. And why I need people to understand is this. If Asar Thompson shoots 32% from three, that is a great win for him. That's great for Asar. If Stu shoots 34% from three this year, that's good for Stu. That's good for Stu's development. I'm talking about Cade. Is that going to help Cade? Is Asar shooting 32% going to have defenders hugging Asar to open up driving lanes? No. Is Stu shooting 34% from three on four attempts a game? Is that going to have guys hugging Isaiah Stewart to open up driving lanes for Cade? No. And what do we know about Cade? What have we, when have we seen the best version of Cade consistently in his career? In his best games of his career so far, what has been his best? Heck, go back to Team USA camp when we had Ben Galver on the podcast who was at the Team USA camp and told us what it looked like, what, how they used Cade. Or simply read the athletic article that talked about how they used Cade. Listen to what Steve Kerr said and how they used Cade and how great he looked in this role. What, what, was, the, what was the role? How did they do it? They gave Cade a roller with spacing around him. And you know what that did? That opened up driving lanes for a big guard that likes to drive. Cade likes to drive. Cade likes to get to the rim. He wants to get to the rim. He wants to have a lob threat. He wants to have a pick and roll threat that he can run a lot of pick and rolls with. Get to the rim, throw a lob to him, or kick out when the defense does help because of his gravity. And there's a, de- there's a difference between the defense helping because of Cade's gravity and the defense helping because they don't respect the other players on the floor from deep, so they want to take Cade out the game. It's a difference. And so far in Cade's career, he has rarely ever had that type of offense. He's rarely ever had that type of spacing. The best time he had spacing, you guys guessed it, was the second half of his rookie season when they traded for Marvin Bagley. By the way, the beginning half of Cade's rookie year, they didn't have a lob threat. They didn't have a roll threat. They didn't have a big man that could catch inside passes and finish around the rim or provided any kind of rim gravity. They didn't have it at all. And Cade struggled. Took a lot of threes. Took a lot of mid-rangers. Rim frequency wasn't great. Rim finishing wasn't great. Second half of his rookie season, we all remember what happened. Cade looked fantastic his second half of his rookie season. And why? Because he had Marvin Bagley, a lob threat, a pick-and-roll threat, with spacing around him, theoretical spacing around him, at, at the very least, hopefully. But most of the time, they I mean, I know people like to laugh at Kojo, but Kojo legit was shooting pretty well for the Pistons. So... Had spacing, and he went and did his thing. Team USA, that's what they said. He looked great doing that. We all know, deep down, even if you want to deny that, hey, this isn't that big of a deal, blah, 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 blah. Everyone that watches Kay Cunningham knows deep and down, you can deny it all you want if you want to. Everybody knows that in order for Kay to succeed offensively, he needs spacing. He needs spacing. You want to know another person that I believe knows this? Kay Cunningham. I think Cade knows this. You want to know why I think he knows this? This is another me reading in between the lines. If you watched our interview with his brother, Cannon, earlier in the offseason, listen to some of the comments he made. He didn't say this directly to me, but listen to the comments that were being made. Talked about how post-ups didn't like how the big men would like to post up. Talked about how they didn't like really the two big men stuff. Just talked about how K did really does really well with spacing. Uh, he does really well with the lob throw. He likes that. Didn't come out, didn't directly come out and say, "Hey, this is what he wants," or "Hey, we don't like this, that, and the other." But very clearly, I thought if you watched that interview, was hinting and kind of leaning to the fact of, "Hey, just get Cade some spacing. Just get get Cade some spacing with a lob threat and let him do his thing. Let let him give him some driving lanes. Give him some help." I, I thought it was very clear that was the message that was being led there during that interview. And 
Can you blame them? Can can you blame them? I think it's very clear. I think I don't think Kay would ever say anything. I don't think Kay's unhappy or anything. Like I, nowhere near am I suggesting that. I'm just simply saying I think Kay knows too that hey, if I just had, sp- it has to be a little thought in the back of his mind. Like man, if I just had some spacing and a lob threat, man, I could I, I could already have been taken off. Like I could I could really do something with this. I'm sure he thinks he could really do something with whatever's in front of him. He's that confident of a player. But we all know that Cade needs spacing. So I understand I said you want to have defense this year. You want to have some defense because last year was just putrid defense. I don't want to see that again. That's why the best balance that you can possibly get of some defense without completely handicapping your franchise player offensively, I believe, is Cade, Ivy, Asar, Boyan, and Durant. You're keeping the spacing with Ivy and Boyan, who were two really good catch-and-shoot three-point shooters. You're giving him his lob threat and Duran, and then on the wing, you got the Pistons' best wing defender in the lineup. And she, he should be able to impact things defensively. Along with that, Asar continues to be a really good rebounder for the Pistons. Was a really good rebounder in that preseason game. Very active rebounder. We saw it in the summer league. I think starting Boyan at the four, Asar, Asar makes up for that too because of how active of a rebounder he is. So I think that's just the best lineup. Doesn't mean they have to go with that lineup. Again, doesn't mean I'm saying the season's a failure if they don't go with that lineup. Not saying that Cade's going to be terrible without that lineup. Like, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying, though, is that it could help. It would help Cade. It would make things a little bit easier on him. Instead of him having to having a shot diet that only relies on pull-up mid-range shots because there's no driving lanes to get all the way to the rim, you might see a, you know, a more spread-out shot diet. And all of a sudden, he may not have a 50% true shooting percentage. All of a sudden, he might be an efficient basketball player. He might get to the rim more. He might draw some more free throws. Like, that kind of stuff may happen. But giving him no spacing offensively, I just don't think is It shouldn't be an option. It shouldn't be. You're making life harder on him. He's going to have to take tougher shots in the half court. I, I don't, I, my thing, I'll end it with this. My thing is this. And it's a very simple concept. Very simple concept to me. You should, if, you should just be doing whatever that makes your franchise player life easiest. Whatever helps your franchise player the most. You should be trying to enable him. You should be trying to put him in the best positions possible. You should be trying to put him in positions that see him thrive to the utmost possibility. Because this team is only going, going to go as far as Cade Cunningham takes them. If Cade is not a top 10 player... At his peak, if Cade is not one of those kind of players, then the Pistons are going to have problems. And the only way he can get there, yes, he needs his own development, but he also needs his team to help him out too. Both things need to happen. Both people, Cade Cade needs to be relied on to do that. He's responsible for that. But his team should also be responsible for helping him out some too. So, again, it's not blow up, you know, press the red button or anything. It's not some big red warning. I think it's just a very simple um, in a very obvious conversation that should be had, that if they're considering this defensive lineup, they better be great defensively, because there is going to be you're you're going to take a hit offensively in the half court. Cage going to take a hit in the half court, I believe, in that half court if that's the lineup that he has to play with, unless he just comes out and turns into Steph Curry. I feel like from beyond, he's going to have to have really good shooting numbers on pull up threes and be a great mid range shooter because it's going to be tough to get for him to get to the rim consistently with that lineup. And they better be great defensively to make it up. If not, then the math doesn't equate, and Cade needs help. So that's where I'm at with it. That was a little bit of a of a rant there, but I mean, come on. I, I think just just give Cade spacing, and let's see what he can do. He hasn't had it really throughout his career. Just let's give him spacing and see what he can do. So let me know what you guys think. What starting lineup should the Pistons go with? Do you think Cade needs help from the organization? Should he need help? Let me know your guys' thoughts and everything I had to say in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kukla Hill. When we come back, we have an update on Jalen Duran's ankle injury and how that could affect the rest of the preseason and possibly the regular season when it comes around. Um, but first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, FanDuel. Snap into end. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. If you go to FanDuel, hey, if you're feeling pretty confident with the Pistons, if you're feeling pretty positive with the Pistons, 
Their over-under is set at 28 and a half wins. If you think they could go over it, hey, go check out FanDuel. That's what FanDuel has them as. FanDuel wrong, right? What do you guys think? But that's the kind of thing you can do over at FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL and NBA season. That's FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Um, before we get to Duran's injury, let me say this last thing. I'm sorry. Last thing on this last topic we were just talking about. Another way that they could maybe make it work, which, would again, if it happens, I'd love to see it. But, again, like, Cade would have to become a great pull-up three-point shooter, a great mid-range shooter, like, consistently, because I think that's what his shot diet would really rely on with that kind of lineup. Or maybe Monty Williams has some hyper-creative way to make that kind of lineup work offensively. I don't know what that creative way could possibly be with that kind of spacing. I don't know. But maybe Monty Williams has some creative way that gets Cade easier looks even with that spacing. Maybe he does. We haven't seen it yet. Maybe Monty knows what he, knows some special special offense that could that could work with that lineup. Maybe he does. He's an NBA coach. I'm not. So maybe he has something up his sleeve that none of us know about. We'll get to see it play out. But I'm just making my educated guess based off what we watched, based off what we know, and that's my opinion. Cade needs spacing, a lob threat. It's just that simple. I think with that, Cade could carry this team to over 28 and a half wins. With that, I think Cade could get this team sniffing the play-in. With that, I think Cade could be an all-star. That's how great I think Cade is if he's given the personnel he needs. So that's that's my opinion. Hey, maybe Monty has some trick up his sleeve. I'd love to see it. I'd be happy. I'd be thrilled if that was the case. I just want – look, at the end of the day, I cover the basketball team, but I would like to see them do well. Like, I would like to see the Pistons do well. So if, if, if that happens and the, and the team's playing well and they're winning some games and everyone's happy, of course, I'd be absolutely thrilled. I, I don't care about – my, my, my point here isn't to be right or wrong. I don't care if I'm right or wrong if it ends up in the team doing well. If, if I'm wrong and it means the team is doing well, I, I'd be thrilled. I, I'd be the first one to come on here and say I'm wrong. Like, and that's all it is. I just think with the spacing and the live threat, Cade could carry this team to where fans want him to take them. That, that's just my opinion. Anyways. So Jalen Duran suffered an injury to his ankle in the first preseason game. I'm sure you guys saw it. Um, I'm sure you guys noticed because he didn't play at all in the second half. Um, Monty Williams said that Jalen Duran did not practice today, um, as I'm recording this on the 10th of October, um, and he has a mild ankle sprain. Now, I was told by multiple people after the game, um, after the preseason game, that he had a noticeable, he had, he had a limp um, after the game, and it didn't look too good. Um, so... They say a mild sprain. That sounds, you know, like as about as good as news you can get with the ankle sprain. Um, we'll see how long he's out. We don't know, like, the length of it. We don't know how, you know, we don't know what his time frame is. Um, but what we do know, I think, they're probably not going to play him for the rest of the preseason. I'd have to assume. Um, you'd want him to get ready for the regular season. Even if he was ready, let's say, at the end of preseason and come back and play a game or something, I don't see why you would do that. You want him to be healthy for the regular season, take as much time as he needs to get healthy. I mean, what that means is more opportunity for Marvin Bagley and James Wiseman. After the first game we came on the podcast, we had a whole segment. Did Marvin Bagley already win the backup five spot with how amazing he played in that game versus how much or maybe how little James Wiseman did? And I thought, yeah, I think Marvin Bagley should have been the guy before preseason. I thought he just confirmed it after one preseason game. Like, that's how great he was in that preseason game. But with Duran now, I think probably missing the rest of the preseason game or rest of the preseason, you're going to get more opportunities for Marvin Bagley and James Wiseman. And look, do I think... do, do do I think Marvin Bagley is going to be the backup five? I do. Do I think Marvin Bagley is the better backup five for the Pistons? I mean, yeah, I, that's what I believe. But James Wiseman it looks like he's going to continue to have a really good shot, a really legitimate shot to win this backup five spot the rest of preseason now. He's going to have his chance. Whether he does it or not, that's going to be on him. But he's going to have his chance. He gets his chance. He's going to have his reps without, you know, having to look over his shoulder or anything. Like, it's just going to be Bagley and, and, and Wiseman. Like, they don't have another guy. 
if Duran's going to be out. So those two guys are going to have to split up 48 minutes. So um, I wouldn't be shocked if Monty literally just went 24-24 with them and to, like, give them both equal reps or whatever, see who does the most with them or whatever. Um, so uh, opportunity for James Wiseman, man, to really try to bounce back with the first preseason game and really try to, you know, set the stage the rest of the preseason and really show his argument for why he should be the backup five. Um, if Duran is injured into the season, um, it, that would be tough. Um, it, that I, I almost feel like that if Duran is injured in the like for the regular season, doesn't start at the beginning of the regular season because he's injured, I almost think then you have to go with the defensive lineup. Because if you go Bagley, I'm assuming Bagley would be the starter. If you go Bagley or Wiseman, either one, um, and then you go with... <laughs> You go with Cade, Ivy, Asar, Boyan, and one of those two guys, all right, then, then your defense might be worse than last year. Like, it actually might be worse than last year. So, you might, if that happens, you might be forced to go Cade, Asar, Boyan, Stu, and whoever, um, whichever big you want to go with. But hope that's not the case. Hope Duran is ready for the regular season when it comes around. I wouldn't be shocked if he missed the rest of the preseason. I actually would encourage him to take the rest of the preseason off and recover. Um, but let me know what you guys think. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there. Pistons preseason game on Thursday. Stay tuned for it. Until next time, peace out.